Welcome to Fast Keto. I'm your host, Keto Jenna Girl. Did you know that you actually have the option to either be a sugar burner or a fat burner? It's called having a metabolic advantage. You can actually burn your own stored body fat for fuel. On this show, we talk about ketogenesis, fasting, biohacking, all with the goal of optimal body composition for longevity and having the highest possible quality of life. I hope you enjoy these interviews and solo casts that I present to you all with this goal in mind. Hey guys, welcome back to Fast Keto. I am so pumped for today's episode because it is all about one of my favorite topics, which is fasting. I talk a lot about intermittent fasting and intermittent fasting is one of the cornerstones of my 28 day challenge program. And one of the things I love to remind people is that if you have a daily eating window of say eight hours and you are fasting outside of that eating window for about 16 hours a day, in total, you will have about 140 hours, 140 hours a week where you are not consuming food. And that is only taking into account the post-absorptive hours you also have those hours between meals so you can have the same amount of fasting time in a week if you put all those hours together just by eating really nutrient dense meals and not snacking between meals and then closing your eating window every day after your last meal and opening it in the morning I think the ideal way to do this is really to have two main meals a day. It's what I do, it's what a lot of people in the keto space end up doing. It's how my 20 day challenge is structured, is basically you can spread it out as three meals or you can do two meals and one meal has a dessert with it. So it's by condensing the periods of time that you are eating, you're expanding the periods of time where you are not eating and therefore you're in either the absorptive state, which lasts for about four hours after eating a meal, or you're in the post-absorptive state. That's when glucagon takes over instead of insulin, when insulin is the dominant hormone you're burning sugar and glucose as your primary fuel when glucagon takes over you are burning fat as your primary fuel so we're going to dig into all of that on today's episode i hope you enjoy it as much as i enjoyed recording it hey guys so i want to tell you about a brand new company that i just found out about called e-meals what they do is offer a service that makes it a little bit easier to follow any kind of lifestyle they've been doing it with paleo for a while and with other kinds of diet and lifestyle and they just launched a brand new one for keto so what they do is they have a keto plan which includes dietitian approved meals and targets the right macros for you and the meals are easy to make and taste amazing what happens is each week you get seven dinners one breakfast one lunch and one dessert and that connects directly to a smart shopping list with online grocery pickup and delivery options. And that saves you time and money. So the meal plan directly connects to the shopping list and you can go through this app that they have and pick out meals that you like, recipes you like, kind of customize and build your meal for the week and it will take that, send it to your local grocery that does deliveries and the groceries will show up at your door and then you have the recipes in the app that you can make meals from during the week. So I think they offer a really great service. It really enables you to save time and money because of being directly connected to your local grocery store, the smart shopping list. It's a subscription-based app. And you also get access to other bonus collections of keto recipes from different keto authors and other influencers in the space that specialize in the keto space. Four-week keto is all you really need to maintain the ketogenic diet on their easy to use platform. So go to emails.com front slash keto 
today and you'll get a 14 day trial if you want to test them out. That's emails.com front slash keto and check them out. Let me know if you like the service, what you think of it. If it's something that you found helpful for you, I would love to know. So be sure to go check them out. I definitely recommend this as a fantastic app and service. So hope you enjoy it. All right, guys, let's dig into today's episode, which is all about fasting for autophagy. And we're going to talk about the processes of autophagy and why this is one of the most powerful biohacks that anyone can do in order to live in optimal health, prevent disease, non-infectious disease, and just live your best life. I absolutely love fasting for autophagy, and I also love intermittent fasting daily. and it really blew my mind when I started realizing that the more and more fat adapted you become, the more and more you start burning fat as your primary fuel instead of glucose, the more your body becomes energy independent because your body is amazing at storing fuel for you for periods of time when you wouldn't have access to it. So our bodies initially were designed with the fact that we didn't have food available at all times of the day. Now we live in this convenience, 24 hours a day, we can get food even delivered or pretty soon brought to us by drones, probably within an hour or 30 minutes of ordering it. We have Uber Eats and, you know, DoorDash and all these different ways of getting food instantly, you know, never mind convenience stores. And, And we live in this era of, you know, convenience, and it makes it very easy to continuously be in a glucose burning state and never really exercise your full metabolic flexibility of being able to burn fat. So our bodies can burn either sugar or fat. And for most of us, we are just kind of stuck in this one, you know, metabolic function, which is just burning glucose as the primary fuel. We're always burning either glucose or fat as the dominant fuel, but there's always one that's dominant. And most people never actually get to access the innate abilities that our bodies have to burn stored body fat because you need to get into the post-absorptive state in order to do that. And if you're eating every four or five hours, which we do in our standard American diet approach to eating, we have breakfast, and then just as we're about to go into that post-absorptive state, oh, we have lunch, and then just as we're about to go in the post-absorptive state, we have dinner, and then maybe an after-dinner snack. And so the body, this is if we don't even snack between you know, breakfast and lunch and lunch and dinner, which I know I used to all the time, whether it was with food or with like a latte or whatever, there's always some kind of food coming in. So the body is always in this absorptive state of absorbing and breaking down the nutrients that are coming in. And as long as nutrients are coming in and you're in that absorptive state, insulin is the dominant hormone and it is directing traffic in your body in a way towards burning glucose for fat. It's breaking down those nutrients. It's using it for immediate energy needs and storing energy for use. Once you get into the post-absorptive state, which happens about four to five hours after eating a meal and there have been Really interesting arguments put forth by Amber O'Hearn, who is a thought leader in the carnivore space and also just in the ketogenic space. And she has put forth this notion that we get into the post-absorptive state more rapidly on keto because our glycogen storage is lower. But it's when you get into that state that glucagon becomes a dominant hormone and we really start burning fat for fuel. And in my opinion, this is probably the main reason why so many of us struggle to ever actually lose weight and keep it off because you have to go in the post-absorptive state in order to burn fat. And I think that many people, when they go on diets, and I include myself in this, you're not actually ever burning fat. You lose water, you burn some, maybe a little bit of muscle and a little bit of fat. But if you just restrict calories, you'll be taking in less food and you might see the scale go down, but the actual amount of that that is actually fat being burnt 
I think is very minimal. And I think that that's why that it's such a struggle. And it's this horrible cycle that you can get into with dieting where every time you diet, you lose water, you lose a bit of fat, you lose a bit of muscle. But then if you go off plan, you know, because you're on this diet, temporary kind of diet situation, you put back on fat. I mean, you don't put back on muscle when you eat in a caloric surplus. So especially if you're eating the wrong macronutrients, macronutrients that involve a lot of carb, a lot of sugar, that's going to keep insulin high all the time. And it's also going to prevent glucagon from ever taking over and getting you into that fat burning post absorptive state. So these two states are so important for us to understand and know about. And it really explains the power of intermittent fasting on a daily basis, because I'm not talking about autophagy right now, just Putting your body in this state where it can have glucagon be the dominant hormone and it can burn and access stores of stored energy, stored fat on the body. And that's why, in my opinion, keto works so well for so many people. It's You have, on the one hand, the fact that you're eating better macronutrients, so you're prioritizing protein and fat and therefore you are lowering insulin overall. They stimulate insulin a lot less when you're in this kind of state. You have the thermic effect of food, so there's a lot of energy that gets burnt just in breaking down protein, especially as opposed to you know having more of a carbohydrate-based diet. And it is in this kind of practice where you start to become more satiated. You have more protein, you have more fat, you're more satiated from the fact that you're getting more nutrient-dense food. So your body becomes more comfortable with getting more nutrient-dense food and therefore you become more energy independent because you're satisfied more of the time. And you also have this ability that you're tapping into to burn fat. So you can burn the fat that you're eating for energy and you can burn some of the fat that you've stored on your body at previous times for energy. And I really think it's the main reason why keto is so beneficial. It's you're switching the macronutrient focus to macronutrients that are more aligned with our essential needs that we need to get from external sources. You're less reliant on non-essential macronutrient, which is carbohydrate. There is no such thing as an essential carbohydrate because essentials by definition are things that we need to get from exogenous sources from outside the body Whereas carbohydrates, when you break them down, are chains of glucose, which our body can make on demand. It can make glucose via gluconeogenesis. So having glucose in the body is so important that our body has this ability to make its own glucose so that it can always have a steady supply and it also preserves a little bit at all times in the body because it's so important for some of our vital organs like the brain. However, when you go into ketogenesis, as I love to refer to it, you are in this process of the genesis of new ketones. Your body is making ketones as a byproduct of burning fat and your brain and some of those organs that we always read in the literature, the brain you know, prefers glucose, but the brain actually loves ketones and we thrive so much off of having ketones circulating. It's not a dangerous place to be for anyone who is fully healthy, does not have any diabetic conditions, and has a full, you know, generally full bill of health. You know, being in a state of ketogenesis means you're burning fat. Why would that be dangerous if that's the way the body is built? It's a metabolic process. And yes, ketones are acids, but so are amino acids. We can't do anything. We can't make anything in our body without amino acids. We can't digest anything without digestive acids. So ketones are acids and they are potentially dangerous in one condition when they are uncontrolled because your body cannot make any insulin and that is in a very specific situation of being a diabetic that has a pancreas whose beta cells do not make insulin, and so they are insulin dependent. They need to take insulin from exogenous sources. But ketogenesis is a byproduct of being in a fat-filled state, and our body 
stores fat so easily. I, I love this because I start out my book, Keto Essentials, talking about how amazing my body is at making fat. I mean, if I could enter contests or competitions on being able to make fat, like I would be so, you know, good at it. I would win. I would take all the the medals home because my body is amazing at making fat. And I'm pretty sure yours is pretty good at making fat too. And there's a reason for that. The reason is because it's our body's way of ensuring survival. It's our body's way of storing energy for us, knowing that energy from exogenous, from outside sources wouldn't always be at our 24 hour convenience fingertips where we have, you know, food dashing to our doors on demand. This, our bodies were designed for an environment when food was not guaranteed. It, it was a scarce resource and we had to expend energy oftentimes to get it. And we had to hunt and find sources of energy. And so our bodies have this ability to store energy for later periods of time when we need to access it. When you get into this modern world that we're in today of convenience, you know, we have food available to us at any time of day or night. And so, as I said earlier, we rarely get into that post-absorptive state when we are burning fat for fuel. Once you get into keto and you realize how easy it actually is to burn your own fat for fuel, you start to fast naturally between your meals. It's not something that's forced. You're like, hey, it's lunchtime, I better have lunch now. And then you realize that you're not even hungry and you haven't thought about food because your body is really well satiated from that meal that you had earlier today. Maybe you had a really nutrient-dense breakfast with bacon and eggs or steak and eggs or just eggs are so satiating. So they provide every single essential amino acid that the body needs. And so you, you go, well, maybe I'll have my lunch a little bit later and you end up having it at two or three, or maybe you go until dinner, and that happens so naturally, just on the basis that your nutrient needs are met, and you're really listening and tuning into your body. So a lot of people start to notice that on keto, they start to intermittent fast, they start to eat less often between meals, snacking becomes a thing of the past. It's all very natural, it's all very organic, and it happens because the body is more satiated than it's ever been because you're getting all of your nutrient needs met. And we really have these essential nutrients we need to be met from essential amino acids and essential fats. And that's why keto is so amazing. Now with that, that goal of having optimal quality of life in mind, and I define quality of life by the absolute amount of joy that you feel experiencing life, I created something called the 20 day ketogenic girl challenge. It's the best product that I could possibly create in order to help as many people as possible try keto out for themselves, get into nutritional ketosis or ketogenesis, and become fat-fueled. When you become fat-fueled, you transition out of that mode of being a sugar burner to being a fat burner, and all these incredible things happen. The first one is you start to burn your own stored body fat for fuel. Now, that's great because a lot of us want to have optimal body composition, less body fat, more muscle, stronger muscle and bone mass, but even if you're not looking to lose fat on your body, even if you're looking just to gain muscle or be strong as you continue to go through life building muscle and strong bones, keto also helps with that. It's muscle sparing. So whether you're in it for weight loss, fat loss, optimizing your body composition, or just improving your overall energy, your mood, your health. I know I personally have never been happier in my entire life or feeling better in my body. And so much of that comes from being at my optimal goal. I have the highest quality of life for myself that I could have ever imagined because I'm at my ideal body composition. I am living my best life in this body and I'm making the most of being in this body. So that's why I created the 20 day challenge. And it's a program that comes with my meal plans, which are four weeks, about 20 days of meal plans. And in there you have shopping, light, shopping lists, 
full guide to getting into ketosis, testing for ketosis, which is optional if you want to do that. But the coolest thing about it is it also comes with my unlimited support and coaching. So I added this in after I had first created the program because I realized that so many of us have questions when we're starting out a brand new way of life, a new lifestyle. Not only do we have lots of questions, but we also need to have a lot of support. And so I created the 20 day challenge because we have a community in there of others who've done the program already, who've gone through it and love being there, love helping out and supporting other people who are joining. And then I'm also there answering your common questions, answering anything that comes to mind while you're trying this out. Do you want to substitute something in the meal plan for something else? Do you want to find a recipe for a certain specific event? Do you want to find what my recommendations would be for ordering off a menu at a certain restaurant? I'm there to help guide you. I know some of these are different kinds of requests, but I'm there to support you in any kind of question that you have doing keto. I love to provide explanations of how different processes work in the body, why ketogenesis works. I love to share any kind of insight and information that I can. And I'm there to be your guide, to be your support. Studies have shown that we get to our goals so much more easily and faster when we have a guide, when we have a friend, a coach, a support person keeping us accountable, keeping us motivated, excited, and that's what I'm here to do. I'm excited to help you get to your goals, get to your best health, because I have never been happier living and enjoying my life and being in my body. I've never had so much body confidence, so much strength, so much zest and excitement for life, and I love helping people experience that for themselves too. You can see dozens and dozens of success stories posted on my different feeds, on Instagram, on Ketogenic Girl, there is a section called Success Stories and Testimonials, and you can read through so many different successes that people have had doing the challenge. So I would love to have you join the challenge. Give it a try. There are other options, too, that can be added on and layered on. During the program, I have my Phase 2 Higher Protein Plans. If you're looking to build more muscle after you've started keto with the 28 day ones. I have build your day ones, no cook plans. I have vegetarian ones. I have all kinds of different versions and add-ons for later on if you decide that you are continuing at this. But what have you got to lose other than stored body fat? Use it for fuel, optimize your health and your body composition today and go check out the 28 day ketogenic girl challenge at ketogenicgirl.com. Now onto our show. Today I'm going to talk about autophagy and seasonal fasting. I'm doing a seasonal fast right now. I just want to preface this by saying that it's difficult for me sometimes to talk about fasting and sometimes I hold back about talking about autophagy because I find that there's really this kind of double standard when it comes to women and men. It makes me a little bit emotional to talk about it, but I want to talk about it because I think it's an important conversation that needs to happen. But Anytime a woman does any kind of extended fasting, I see this all the time on social media, people blast her, people will blast her as though somehow there's a problem, that there's some kind of eating problem, there's some kind of disorder there if a woman voluntarily forgoes food for more than a day. And I see so many men out there, people that I follow in our space who do extended fasts quite often. Uh, one of my friends, Dr. John Lemansky, does a regular five-day fast, and he posts about it all the time. And I've told him before, you know, sometimes we'll talk, and I'm like, I'm doing a fast right now as well, but it's hard for me to post about it because I don't want to be jumped all over and have people say, oh, well, you know, there's something wrong with you, or you must have some kind of issue because you're doing a fast. <clears throat> and I see so many men really out there talking about how they're doing fast for autophagy and I am a biohacker at my core. I love learning about autophagy and I got to study it this year when I was doing biochemistry and exact exactly how it works on a cellular level. And it is amazing. Our cells have this built-in recycling plant where we can recycle incorrectly folded proteins, damaged organelles, and 
DNA mutagens, our cells will take those damaged proteins and bring them via these autophagosomes into this part of the cell that will sort of engulf them via these vesicles and it will basically eat them. The macrophages eat them. That's why autophagy, it stands for the Greek words self-eating. And it is amazing to study this and to learn more about how our cells have this built-in mechanism of self-cleaning. And, you know, just like with your house, a spring cleaning is a fantastic thing to do every once in a while to just clear out all the clutter and to have a reset. I don't think that there's anything wrong with women engaging in this practice for the purposes of autophagy. And the Nobel Prize was recently awarded to an incredible scientist who discovered this process and he did, he didn't, he didn't really discover it so much as he sort of illuminated or explained more how it works and he explained how this process is happening his name is Yoshinori Osumi and he studied the mechanisms and documented them of how these vesicles can transport damaged proteins and organelles to this recycling center to be degraded via this process known as phagocytosis so it's one of the ways that our body deals with DNA mutagens and damaged proteins and we don't want to have DNA mutagens these are carcinogenic to the body and it is so important for our, our cells to have these mechanisms because many of our proteins are incorrectly folded and that happens all the time because a lot of the food that we eat basically becomes our body cells and eventually tissues and organs and it really is directly from the food that we eat you know we hear you are what you eat. It is absolutely valid. And it's so important for our cells to have this built-in mechanism. And I think that engaging in a fasting practice, for me, it's a very spiritual thing. And it's something that I use as not only a health biohack to do, you know, for me, I like to do it seasonally. Some people do it once a year. Some people do it more frequently than that. I like to do it about four times a year and not more than that because too much autophagy can also be a net negative. So it's important to not overdo it with extended fasting. But I really want to say that we can't engage in fasting. It's, it's not safe for us. It's only safe for men to do. And women are strong. We are strong AF and we can do anything that a man can do we can build muscle like men can do. We can engage in fasting practices like men do. We don't have to treat ourselves like delicate little flowers and, you know, say that this is something that only men can participate in without being critiqued or being questioned as though they might have some underlying issue. When you study and look at the miraculous effects of autophagy it is so incredible what the body does and what it can do and i think it's so important that fasting be something that is accepted as a practice because it's so beneficial to our health and it's something that has been engaged in for centuries it's one of the oldest practices hippocrates who is the sort of grandfather founder of modern medicine every doctor has to take the hippocratic oath he said food is thy medicine. And he had these centers in Greece where, you know, their hospitals had a fasting floor. And fasting was known as a way to heal the body. And we see it in animals when they're sick, they lose their appetite. But in our modern world of convenience, if you even talk about fasting, people get really alarmed that you would forego food. And I think that that shows how out of balance things are that just talking about foregoing food implies that there is might be something deeper or something wrong you know that the fact that people engage in month-long fasts every year for ramadan and do so without question many people fast for lent you know it's especially once you become fat adapted it's a very easy thing for the body to go into i am on day three 
of this six day fast. I feel fantastic. I feel full of energy. I feel clear, productive. I don't feel tired or sluggish. The first day is always the worst for me because I feel a little bit tired. I just mostly rest really on the first one or two days. And being fat adapted, I'm always being fat fueled. So the fact that I've been in ketosis for about five years, it makes all of this very easy for me. And that's why I always say if you are not fat adapted or you're just getting into keto or you're still on a high carb diet, I wouldn't attempt any kind of fasting. It's really something that should be natural and organic. And like I said, you know, you become so well nourished from eating so well at your meals, you know, I, that you just fast naturally because your body is well nourished. It's not some kind of situation where you're forcing it. Um, if you are, your body needs, probably needs more nutrients and it's not a good idea if you don't feel well. But if you are interested in fasting for autophagy, it is an incredible process whereby the body recycles, like I said, these damaged, incorrectly folded proteins. There's actually an error rate to our cellular DNA replication, our transcription and translation that, that occurs. And so the body has these natural mechanisms there to take care of those incorrectly folded proteins and damaged organelles. Going into a fast enables this process to take place at a faster rate, and it enables the body to really focus on this self-cleansing where the cells are able to take old cellular debris and literally recycle it, it breaks down damaged proteins into amino acids, again, that can be utilized again, and you have NADPH and all of these other factors that are important in the, the DNA replication and RNA translation and transcription. We need all of these factors, and they are literally recycled. They're breaking, broken down, and then their parts are individually used for other processes to build other proteins. And it is amazing to look at the sophistication of our cells. And there's being awarded the Nobel Prize is kind of a big deal. It, it shows the recognition from the scientific community of how important this knowledge is, that we understand autophagy, that we understand that our bodies were designed to feast and fast and fast and feast, and that feasting constantly all the time, it's going to put us in the situation that we're in now where we have these alarming numbers, you know, 88% of Americans not being metabolic, metabolically healthy. I think it's a real recognition of the fact that we are in this constant state of feasting and, you know, things that used to be considered annual treats. You know, if you look at just like any coffee shop, some of the treats that they sell they're like biscotti. They sell these giant biscotti, you know, just to have with your morning coffee. Biscotti is an Italian traditional dessert that you would have at the holidays, at Christmas time, or special occasions. And we're now eating these things as daily snacks. I mean, we're in this perpetual state of eating and feasting and eating things that, you know, like I remember a friend of mine's mother who told me that, you know, when they used to when Coke first came out, Coca-Cola, they would go to the store and they treated it like candy and they would pour out a teaspoon of Coca-Cola and drink that as a sugary treat. And now people, we drink this in a can, sometimes multiple times a day. And the diet version of it has tons of chemicals in it. All of these things disrupt these cellular processes of making new proteins, of making these particles that become part of our cells, become our tissues and our organs. And it's no wonder that we have so much non-infectious chronic disease out there today when you look at how we are constantly in this feasting mode. So I really think that fasting is a practice that can be incorporated into the daily routine just by having an eating window, and it is one of the core principles of my 20-day challenge, is having a daily eating window of eight hours and fasting for 16 hours outside of that. If you do that alone, you will be in the post-absorptive 
an absorptive state for over 140 hours a week. It's a lot. It goes a long way to depleting glycogen, to getting in that fat burning state, to supporting this, you know, being in this post absorptive state where we are able to access our stored body fat for fuel. And there has been some work out there suggesting that a minimum of 12 hours only is required in order to get some benefits of autophagy. And we need to do more research into this and understand it more. We're just starting to learn about some of these processes. These, you know, therapies and applications that have been used and have been around for hundreds of years, thousands of years, you know, our body has this incredible innate wisdom and its prime directive is homeostasis. It's maintaining the balance in our body of pH, of hormones, of all these different factors that are so important for our optimal health. And we have these built-in mechanisms like autophagy, but we need to be able to support the body in accessing these built-in metabolic processes in order to maximize our health and live in optimal health. So I think fasting is an excellent tool that can be practiced on a day-to-day -day basis with intermittent fasting, fasting between your meals, eating so well at your meals with nutrient-dense foods of quality proteins and fats and keeping carbohydrates to the lowest starch ones possible, eating really well at those meals so that you can fast between your meals and then you feel fully satiated between your meals, you feel fully satiated between your last meal of the day and your first meal of the day is really driven by real actual hunger, not habit, not routine, not I'm eating this because I was told breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Yes, breaking your fast is an important meal to have every day, but does it need to happen always at the same time right after you've woken up and maybe you're not necessarily needing food or nutrients yet? It all depends on you and the more you tune into your instinctive nature and your biology, you will your body will tell you when it needs nutrients from exogenous sources, it'll tell you when to eat and your body will communicate with you so well when we feed it real whole foods. And that's what keto really is all about to me is eating real nutrient dense foods and then being able to fast outside of those periods of feasting on nutrient dense foods. If you want to use the term feasting, let's talk about feasting on real food and then naturally fasting between your meals because you no longer need to constantly depend on glucose because you are in this sort of fuel independent fat adapted state. So I hope you guys enjoyed this primer on autophagy. I will do more episodes on this and I'm on day three of my current six day fast. I do these seasonal fasts about once a quarter and spring for me is always a wonderful time to do this practice and I am really well fat adapted. I have been fat adapted for several years and this comes very easily to me. I don't encourage anyone to push themselves into doing longer fasts. Fasting between your meals and fasting in a daily eating window is more than enough to get so many of the benefits that we've talked about on today's episode. And if you are interested in learning more about autophagy, I encourage you to go to the NobelPrize.org website. You can learn all about the amazing discoveries about autophagy and how it works on a cellular level. It is absolutely fascinating how sophisticated our cells are. So I would love to hear your feedback on this episode. Feel free to leave me a comment on my post about it and share with me what you liked, what you want to hear more of. I am here to deliver information to you that you might find useful, beneficial in your life. If you enjoyed today's episode, leave me a rating or review. It means the absolute world to me. And I love, love, love reading your reviews. So thank you so much for listening. I hope that you have a fat-filled rest of your day until the next episode. Bye for now. All right, guys, thank you so much for being here today and tuning in. I would like to invite you to check out the 20 day ketogenic girl challenge. A lot of the things that we talked about on today's episode, I find 
are really solved by doing a ketogenic meal plan like the one that I designed, the 20 day ketogenic girl challenge. And a lot of that comes down to having someone already calculate everything for you, having the macros all dialed in for you, having this meal plan with all the portions already outlined for you. It really helps address a lot of the portion control issues and having everything calculated already really helps with preparation and doing batch prep. A lot of people on the challenge will pick out a day, say on Saturday or Sunday, and they'll meal prep ahead for the week and they'll pick two or three days from the plan that they love and they'll repeat it such as day five, which has the burger with my special keto burger sauce and repeat that. And you can do that as many times as you like. And it really makes preparation and following keto and the meal plans a lot easier and doing that batch prepping and meal prep on the weekend. And the meal plans also come with a shopping list. They come with a full guide to testing yourself for ketosis. And the best part is they include my support and coaching in our members Facebook group, which is an awesome community. I love being in there and it really helps so much having other people doing this program with you and alongside and people who've done it already and successfully reach their goals there to inspire you and to support you and having that community built in is so important. Our success rates go way, way up when we're doing any kind of diet or lifestyle change when we have a buddy and I'm here to be your buddy, to be your guide and help you with your journey because you can post any questions that you have about keto, about the meal plans, about low carb, and I am there to answer your questions and to support you as you go. And uh, I just think it makes such a big difference to have a coach and a support group and a support supportive community around you. So check out the 20 day ketogenic girl challenge. Just a word of caution, there is another 20 day keto challenge that's being sold. It is not mine. I only sell my program from ketogenicgirl.com. So if you see a link to that, it's a copycat version that has kind of popped up in the last year. It's also has a similar name, 20 day ketogenic challenge. But if you are looking for my program, which comes with my support and coaching, you can only get it from ketogenicgirl.com and make sure that you are purchasing the one for me because I have some people who have purchased this other program thinking that it's my program and the coaching and support is not included because it's not the program that I formulated and that has had so much success. If you want to read and check out some of the success stories, you can go to ketogenicgirl.com and click on testimonials and reviews or success stories. And you can read some of the dozens and dozens of success stories of people who have done the challenge. And if you join the program, you'll get to interact with so many of those people in the group who've had real success and are there to share tips and tricks for making all of this so much easier and so much fun. So check out the 20 day ketogenic girl challenge at ketogenicgirl.com. And until the next episode, I hope you have a fat filled rest of your day. A few disclaimers. By listening to this podcast, you agree not to use this podcast as medical advice as I am not a qualified healthcare provider. The information presented on this podcast is for educational purposes only. Ketogenic Girl is not qualified to provide medical advice. Consult your own physician for any medical issues that you may be having. This entire disclaimer also applies to any guests or contributors to this podcast. Prior to beginning a ketogenic diet, you should undergo a full health screening with your physician to confirm that a keto diet is suitable for you and to rule out any conditions or contraindications that may pose risk or that are incompatible with the ketogenic diet. A keto diet may or may not be appropriate for you if you have any kind of health condition, whether known to you or unknown. So you must consult your physician to find this out. Anyone under the age of 18 should consult with their physician and their parents or legal guardian.